Hello everybody and welcome back to Rebellious Menstruation. Today we're looking at the development of menstruation being equated to womanhood and how problem, problematic that is for children. Girls as young as 10 are suffering severe stress, anxiety and depression as they're being forced to grow up at an unnaturally fast pace and often this has to do with the early sexualization and sexualization of puberty creating a cultural shift that raises the expectations of children. These cultural expectations are very rarely imposed on male children or kind of emblemized by the boys will be boys and oft quoted colloquialism. Clothing norms are more likely to restrict girls actions and behaviour than boys of the equivalent age. Uniforms for girls often favour dresses and skirts and stockings, boys shorts and pants. Even before biology and puberty creates divergences, family, friends and cultural structure influence what it means to be a girl and the inequities that stem from that and how these rigid gender expectations increase mental and psychological health problems. Risks from pre-puberty include child marriage, pregnancy, lack of education, either by access or due to financial and marriage issues, as well as male children's education being a cultural priority over a female child. Other risks include sexual assault, STIs, violence and body dysphoria. Of course, male children grow with a higher risk of substance abuse, suicide, mental health, health and mental health issues that often lead to a shorter life expectancy. In fact, they are encouraged from boys will be boys to men will be men. Don't cry, don't seek medical help, don't go to the doctor. Puberty reinforces and exacerbates these issues, reinforcing the pressure for girls to be restricted and monitored in an at-home environment, encouraging girls to be silent and modest and often menstruation forces the need to be covered and modest again. Often these attitudes are reinforced by offensive platitudes. Don't sit like that, don't wear that, don't show that. What are you not selling? What are you selling? And these are quite often directed at 10, 11 or 12 year old girls whose ideology hasn't caught up to that level of adult sexuality. The onset of menstruation is imbued with so much shame and stigma, highlighted by gender divisions and the promotion of gender segregation. This is often to protect girls and their virginity from aggressive boys. Boys who have unrestricted access to sports and education are given the freedom of movement at the expense of girls' access to any of these things. That, you know, her alleged chastity is further responsible, like, <laughs> so it restricts, it restricts girls' access to any of these things that males have access to, male children have access to, for her alleged chastity and that further responsibility is shifted away from boys and onto girls. Don't stray too far, don't encourage them. When not is, when the same is not forced onto boys. Menstruation and other physical developments that come with puberty, such as body hair and breasts, compound negative social trauma, further objectifying and sexualizing children's body bodies, highlighting further body dysmorphia, shame, disempowerment, and removing a girl's agency over her own body by linking menstruation to a boy's lack of control, his aggressive tendencies, and sexual conduct. Further, this pigeonholes both boys and girls into false cultural stereotypes which may not necessarily suit either gender or any of the genders, because there are multiple.
sorry, um, as a consequence of this perceived sexual awakening linked to menstruation leads to a restriction placed on girls and not on boys and creates all of the issues that we have highlighted before, depression, anxiety, suicide, violence. And it restricts girls' spatial mobility, meaning it restricts their knowledge, power and power base, creating significant health and social implications. These implications have tumble on effects for non-conforming genders and non-binary genders, as well as transgender women and men. While it can be acceptable for small children to be non-gender conforming from puberty onwards, this behaviour is increasingly challenged as unacceptable. Unless traits are considered to be masculine or powerful, meaning that trans female or gender non-binary gender non-binary binary feminine can be disregarded as weak because of this femininity. In part two, we'll be looking at trans period problems faced by both trans male and trans females as well as gender non-binary. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your morning, afternoon or evening depending on where you are in the day and I of course will see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.